Are you thinking about immigrating but can't bring yourself to leave South Africa? You can have the, both, the best of both worlds by semigrating. If you want to know more about the semigration craze sweeping the country, you are in the right place. I'm Dumi and welcome to the 500th episode of the Private Property Podcast. Before we get started, I would just like to thank all our viewers for tuning in every single night, 7 p.m. and allowing us to reach this milestone. From all of us here at the Private Property Podcast, we would like to say he can see le. Thank you, Siabonga, Danki, Siabonga. Thank you so much for spending your evenings with us right here on the Private Property Podcast. Congratulations once again to Ntabiseng Ramoshale Flora for walking away with that 500 Rand cash prize from Friday's show. Thank you so much Ntabiseng for engaging with us and you can also be like her. Just shoot your shot and share this post and tag your friends as well and the person with the most um, shares will walk away with that 500 Rand cash prize. So before we get started, let's take a look at our note board to see what the hype about immigration is all about. This is the, pri the private property notice. Let's begin. According to Lightstone data, Gauteng has the highest rate of people who are choosing to semigrate in 2021. This is followed by the Western Cape, Mpumalanga, as well as the Eastern Cape. With the interest rates being at an all-time low, now is the time for those who want to semi-retire. Home buyers are taking advantage of the availability of affordable housing before it's all gone, and they want to secure uh, a spot before they become the, the expensive again uh, with the developments that are coming in the market. Hermanus, according to the South African report, is the fastest growing South African town for high net worth individuals. A large number of Cape Town, Pretoria, as well as Johannesburg residents have relocated to Hermanus over the past 10 years. And seaside towns like the Garden Route, uh, like Mossel Bay, Plettenberg Bay, George, as well as Naisna, have emerged as the semigration hotspots in South Africa. That's all for tonight when it comes to semigration. We hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about it. And if you are looking to semigrate, stay tuned because we are going to be talking semigration all throughout this week. And of course, more in today's episode. Our guest tonight has, uh, has over 14 years of experience as, as a consumer marketing and a marketing executive, and he's deeply committed to the use of cross-industry skills, knowledge, and expertise to ensure business growth and innovation. He also knows a thing or two about credit and the rental housing market. Viewers at home, please help me welcome the head of marketing and sales of, at TPN Credit Bureau, Valdu Marcus. Valdu, thank you so much for joining us once again right here on the Private Property Podcast. Thank you very much to me and thanks for having us. Um, and yes, congratulations on your 500th show. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm sure people are screaming at home and saying, yes, we finally reached 500. People have been going crazy on, on um, building up to the 500th episode and we are really, really looking forward to celebrating it more. And we're talking semigration today and um, let's just jump into it to say for the person who's watching this for the first time or who's hearing what's immigration, uh, the, the terms immigration for the first time, what exactly is it and how does it um, affect them even? So immigration is, is, I think it's become a, a trendy word, but it's been going on for, for quite a few years. Um, we known it uh, previously as urbanization, people moving into cities for job opportunities, for career opportunities, for better education. But interestingly, the past couple of years, we've seen a reverse almost of that. People are moving out of the bigger cities to go and find that unique spot that offers great education, a place that offers um, great lifestyle, um, and also not just to retire for a career, but generally to bring up your kids, um, good service delivery, um, reliable, reliable services, which has become more and more important. And therefore, people are looking from bigger cities to smaller cities. Sure, and you, you just spoke about it because my next question was, what are some of the reasons why people semigrate? And um, you, you just touched on um, uh, the, the raising of children and maybe even service delivery. What are the opportunities that semigration presents to landlords and even tenants? Well, I think the most obvious one is to look at um, property prices. So what you would normally be able to afford in a big city, you can get a lot more value for money. 
Um, younger families are opting to go for bigger family homes where they can establish themselves for a longer period of time so the family can grow into the house. Um, COVID, of course, have accelerated it and um, highlighted the fact that we are restricted. Um, if you live in a big city, um, the lockdown re uh, restrictions uh, prevented us from free movement. So someone with a big yard um, appreciated that big yard for the first time because they used it. They could move around. So apart from COVID accelerating it, I think there's a general movement towards better mental health. Um, high stress jobs now that we're working online um, across borders, not just in your local time zone, means that people do want to enjoy a, a slower lifestyle uh, when it's uh, um, available to them after hours. Sure. And, you know, based on your experience, do you think that um, the, the, the search of greener pastures ends up in a fairy tale or do we have some challenges, of course, that come with it? And in your experience, have you seen this being successful for many people who do semigrate? We, we have definitely seen it. Um, and, and that's why we con uh, continue seeing this trend growing. Um, there is, of course, its own challenges. Um, we're seeing that a lot of companies are introducing their return to work policy. So mm -hmm. if you decided to move to a smaller town, um, your company might decide to say you need to be back in the office. Mm -hmm. um, and that in itself will po pose certain challenges. Um, although we work online, collaboration, creativity um, is always hyped during um, at the office sharing with your colleagues. Um, and then there's also the stories where you have moved to areas, especially if you've got close family knits um, and friendship groups, um, you have a support system, moving to a smaller town, moving into another province, um, you take away that and you'll have to rebuild it. So although there's upsides, um, some, of the some of the downside is, is that you, you're leaving familiarity. Yeah. But it's not a brand new concept to us because um, South Africans have um, moved between provinces to, to chase careers for many, many years. Sure. And, you know, just before um, we, we went live, we were talking a little bit more about the hotspots, right? And we have identified some of those hotspots. Do you see anything else that is outside of the ones that we identified that might just be maybe an area that's coming up that maybe if, um, or even not just maybe um, for residential purposes, if there are new um, warehouses and factories and even um, corporations that are legit saying, okay, now we are moving from Johannesburg, for example, to Port Elizabeth because it's closer to the harbor and all of those things. Are we seeing such trends? Yes, we are. And I think one of the ones that's only started really picking up now is uh, Nelspreet. Mm. Um, Nelson Mandela Bay has definitely seen an, an inflow of, of, of uh, people moving out of Gauteng as well as KwaZulu-Natal. Interesting, it's not just, um, if you look at Gauteng, it's the past decade that we've really seen that there's been a net outflow of people mm. to various provinces. And of course, the most popular being KwaZulu-Natal as well as the Western Cape. But we also see some people moving into the Eastern Cape, although it's only marginal compared to um, the other two provinces. And once again, it's got to do with um, the quality of life, um, the education, um, available um, and with international flights now moving to Cape Town, um, flying direct, um, it's become a lot more accessible. Um, Cape Town itself has been identified as um, the Silicon Valley of, of Africa and that's built into smaller towns like Neisner as well as Stellenbosch. Sure. And uh, what would you, what would you, advice would you give to somebody who is, you know, considering semigration? And um, we can also even open it up to businesses as well. People who are business owners, who are not too long ago, were speaking about um, adaption and supply chains and um, sub, uh, business owners adapting to the changes that are happening to the market. What advice would you give them when it comes to semigration? Well, understand where you are in your life plan. You know, are you starting um, off with your career? Um, you are a lot more um, mobile. You can move around. That kind of lifestyle, um, you would enter into a lease agreement rather than purchasing a property. If you're a young family and you're deciding, listen, we really want to move to a place where good quality of life, good schooling, um, that's going to be a longer term strategy because you don't want to take your kids out of school constantly. So that might be a longer term strategy and then invest in a property, um, purchase that. So it really depends on where you are in your life plane. And of course, um, businesses are also looking at fragmenting their offices. So they're spreading their risk. They want people to um, access offices when they live in KwaZulu-Natal, in the Western Cape, in Gauteng. 
um, and it makes it easier for people to connect via the digital channels. So businesses are also looking up taking up smaller offices and spreading them so people can access them and can interact with them if it's required. Um, I think the third thing that we, we really have to, to consider here is, is that, of course, as the cost of uh, fuel prices have increased substantially, mm. value chains from harbors into inner cities like or inner provinces like Gauteng um, will add um, additional cost, um, which if you live on the coastal towns closer to harbors, that prices might be slightly lower. In your opinion, um, over the next two to three years, what are we seeing? Is this trend or this immigration wave um, going to die down because of all of these new things that are coming up? You know, you've mentioned how, how volatile the market is becoming and also how policies and organizations are now mm -hmm. becoming stringent because um, vaccines are available. Because the main reason why I feel like it, it's the immigration spiked up was because of COVID-19 and because now people are being uh, slowly um, acclimatizing themselves to how the world has changed and now bringing in the vaccination and now bringing in all of these things that have um, changed the landscape. Are we seeing this immigration trend dying out or are we seeing it ramping up? In your opinion, what do you think is going to happen in the next couple of years? There's definitely, gonna be, in my opinion, there's definitely going to be areas where we're going to continue seeing the growth. And the reason for that is as these towns expand, they build great infrastructure, they can support larger volumes, um, great lifestyle um, is going to be at the top of the list when people start looking at immigration. So I don't think the trend is going to slow down. The uh, speed and acceleration thereof um, is going to be dependent on a, the supply of affordable um, housing and property within those towns. Of course, as demand ramp up, uh, prices go up. Um, and supply lags a little bit. So we might in the near future see a bit of a slowdown purely because property prices might be inflated in those areas. But the long term trend, I believe uh, we will see um, the movement of people continuing. Sure. And, you know, with, with all of the, the movement and all of these things that are happening, what should estate agents and people who are actually role players in the, in the property market look out for? If I'm a property investor, what would you advise I do? Are you saying I should now start buying properties in different cities? What would, you, what would your advice be? Well, yes. Um, I think one of the big trends that is, as we're seeing right now, is student accommodation. Um, students are moving away from home into uh, towns um, like Poch of Sturm, uh, Stellenbosch, UCT. Um, that in itself has become a really good investment for, for especially uh, property owners that want to start out with a smaller capital um, outlay. Um, your holiday towns um, will always have the long and short term lease demands. Um, and one of the key things that you will need to look out for is infrastructure development and the robustness of the municipality's ability to fund the increase of um, influx of people and the infrastructure that's required for it. Um, and then, of course, trying to find that uh, what is next. And if we had the crystal ball, we would have loved to uh, say what, what town is next. Mm. But I would keep an eye out um, on, for instance, smaller towns within, within the Western Cape, um, as well as going then into the Northern Cape and the Karoo. I think there's some interesting developments there. It's not going to be huge movements, but there's going to be a couple of hotspots that one should look out for and keep an eye out for. Sure. No, thank you so much for that. And um, any last words before I let you go tonight? No, it's, um, I think... Uh, it's, it's good to be on the show and um, being able to share our knowledge with everyone. And um, yeah, what we're seeing in the trends is immigration is, um, is, is a trend and it's been coming for mm. quite a few years. So um, we, we expect it to see it continue. Sure. No, thank you so much, Valdo, for joining us. And we really, really appreciate it. Have yourself a good evening. Thank you very much. And thank you to you for staying to almost the end of our show tonight. Of course, I'm not going to let you go until you know who won the 500 Rand cash prize for our 500th show. <laughs> um, and tonight's winner is none other than, can I please have a drum roll because this is a very special one, none other than Anelda Everton. Anelda is one of our star engagers on the Private Property Podcast. Thank you so much, Anelda, and congratulations to you. And if you want to be like her, do ensure that you 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 you. Tune in every weekday at 7 p.m. right here and interact with us on our comments. And remember, a healthy dose of property information might just be what you need to make sure that you are on your A game. This is the Private Property Podcast. And from myself to me and the Private Property Podcast family, have a good night.